All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, Julio Rivera will join us momentarily. We'll talk politics and get to your calls. But the Clinton-Trump feud is heating up, needless to say. And Newsmax TV's Miranda Khan has more. First it was Donald Trump can't possibly win the Republican nomination, then it was he can't possibly beat Hillary Clinton in a general election. If there's one thing we do know when it comes to this presidential election, all bets are off. Let's just imagine I'm on a debate stage with Donald Trump. Now personally, I am really looking forward to it. Hillary Clinton may say she's looking forward to being on the debate stage with Donald Trump. And there are presumptive nominee, otherwise called their presumptuous nominee. But she probably wasn't looking forward to this. Two new national polls show Donald Trump beating the former Secretary of State for the first time. I think beating her in a debate would be one of the easy challenges of my life. In an effort to change that trend, a pro-Hillary Clinton super PAC released this new ad, hitting the Donald over his failed businesses. We have Trump magazine, Trump vodka, and Trump University. The ad comes at the same time this YouTube video titled Hillary Clinton lying for 13 minutes straight has gone viral. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I support marriage for lesbian and gay couples. That's why we call her Crooked Hillary Clinton. So if you thought things were heated between Clinton and Trump, now, just wait, a Clinton super PAC just announced a $96 million ad buy from now until the election. Steve, back to you. All right, Miranda, thank you very much. And uh, joining us now, as promised, Julio Rivera, host of the Julio Rivera Show on Spreaker.com. He's also a Newsmax insider and conservative activist. Good to see you, my friend. How are you doing, now, now, just for the record, I will be on Julio's show tonight. Uh, on Spreaker, where can people tune in and find that? Yes, that is on Spreaker.com. Look up the Julio Rivera Show on the Lanterns Buzz Network. All right, I'm looking forward to it. Talk a little sports, a little politics. You never know what you're going to get. Um, now, you wrote a piece for, for Newsmax, um, uh, Can Conservatives Mold Trump? But let's get to that for a second. Um, this this, this Clinton-Hillary feud. Both of these candidates have extremely high unlikables. Mm -hmm. But i got to tell you, maybe it's because I'm prejudiced. I just think that Trump's unlikables are more easy to overcome. I don't think people don't trust him. I don't think people think he's a liar. But when it comes to Hillary, that is the case. At least that's what the numbers show. Well, the, the issue with Trump, I think, is what Republicans are more uh, go off of principles. They go off of the platform. And it seems already that Donald Trump has wavered on a lot of the important issues you know, of the election. He waited till about 80% of the primaries were done to then go ahead and revamp his tax plan. So he hasn't even spent a day in office and he's already raised taxes, so to speak. You know, and he's had a couple of flip-flops that have been in there. But at the end of the day, I, I do understand what you're saying. Hillary Clinton is very unlikable. You know, the bottom line is her history is very checkered and there's a lot of scandal and God knows what's gonna happen between now and election day, especially right. with the emails. Uh, but as a former Cruz backer, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you're you're going to vote for Trump. I would um, assume. Well, what well, we're trying to do now, and a lot of conservatives on this, on the further right side of the aisle, what they're trying to do is try to create a mechanism for accountability for Trump. The bottom line is, in 2008, conservatives didn't come out and vote, and McCain lost. Same in 2012 with Romney. We need a little bit more out of Trump. You know, as far as what he's, what, how is he going to go ahead and stick to the issues? Is he going to flip flop on everything else? I mean, right now the transgendered bathroom issue is a big issue with evangelicals. He won the SEC primary primarily with evangelicals. So right. you have to understand, they voted for him then. Will they vote for him in November? Well, he says it's, it, it should be a state uh, issue. I, 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 but, but, but here's my thing. Um, it's going to be Hillary if it's not going to be Trump. Yeah. Are, you, are you satisfied with the list of Supreme Court nominees that he put out yesterday? Does that prove anything to you? You know what? He put that list out yesterday. Yeah. So that list accounts for yesterday. Now, if he puts out a list next week or if he puts out a list uh, further think down the road. You change his list? I mean, he's changed on a lot of uh, things. Well, then, well but he, he promised he'd give a list and he gave a list. He I mean, did. I, but, but I mean, the, the alternative is, and you say conservatives stayed home, you think conservatives who stayed home with McCain and conservatives who stayed home with Romney are happy with themselves? for giving us Obama twice and giving us the, the state of the union, if you will, that we now have? 
Well, I mean, if you look at them both ideologically over the years, the case could be made that they're in some ways equally progressive. I mean, some of the statements that Trump has made regarding health care have been to the left of even Obamacare. But, but, but again, I, I just don't think we would have been where we are on so many levels. I don't think you would have had Obama, Obamacare. I don't think you would have had uh, you know, uh, the, the usurping of, uh, of the law and ex writing executive orders and mm -hmm. the economy as, as bad as it is and everything else. So let me ask you this. If, if, I mean, if Hillary gets elected, if it's a choice between Trump and Hillary, and you still feel Trump may not stick to the list, or Trump may change his tune, or Trump isn't conservative enough, I mean, you're willing to, to, to join other conservatives who might sit home and, and let Hillary win, as opposed to, to making sure she doesn't get three more Sonia Sotomayors, or, or Elena Kagan's, or, or Ruth Bader Ginsburg's on that court? Well, I think we're going to have to then at that point make America great again or something. I mean, I really don't know which way to go with it. This is all the wound is still very, you know, it hasn't healed yet completely. We have time until the election, but I would like to see him come and, you know, cater to conservatives a little bit more considering the fact that, you know, we helped hand him the nomination at this point. Well, you didn't. And, mm. and Cruz didn't, and, mm. uh, and people who thought like you didn't. But all right, I get the point. All right, 877 Newsmax, ladies and gentlemen. 877 uh, 639 Let's go to the phones. Nancy is in Comac, New York. Hello, Nancy. Hi. Hi. I just want to say I love your show. Thank I you. watch it every night. Thank you. Appreciate that. I love Donald Trump. I think he is the man for the job. He tells it like it is, and he may be a billionaire, but he's a working man, and that's what we need to uh, go into Washington and stop all the corruption. Well, what about it, Julio? Well, I mean, he, he actually uh, he does work hard. I mean, he, do, he, he was very successful as a businessman, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. Some people say he hasn't been. Some people say he's just licensing his name, and his name is worth a lot of money. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a guy that's, you know, set over 70 years old and he's out on the campaign trail. So I can agree to that point that he is a hardworking guy and we do need somebody who's, you know, not going to spend that much time on the golf course like with what we've had lately. So, I mean, at least that would be somewhat of an improvement. I think we're going to convince him when push comes to shove, Nancy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he loves this country and that's why he's doing it. Yeah. And I love this country and that's why I'm going to vote for him. And well, that's what I'm saying. I think we could convince Julio because Julio loves this country too. And to turn it over to Clinton by, uh, by being absent at the uh, voting booth, I don't think is, is the answer. And he'll, he'll, he'll come to realize that, mm -hmm. I hope. Nancy, thank you very much for the kind words. Appreciate the call. Let's go to uh, uh, Sanford, Maine and say hello to David. Hey, David, you're next. Hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, Hillary is going around saying that Donald Trump is unqualified to be <laughs> yeah, president of the United States. I heard States. that, yeah. If, if the Justice Department does their job and indicts her, she will be unqualified to be president of the United States because she will not be able to have a security clearance. And Eric Snowden, come on home from Russia because nobody will ever be prosecuted again under these laws. What do you think, Mike? Steve. Well, I, I, I mean, obviously, if she's indicted, uh, that's the end of her candidacy, notwithstanding the fact that Ed Klein told me that he's heard that she's telling people if she's indicted, she'll run anyway. I mean, I don't even see how the party would stand for that, to be honest with you. Uh, but, uh, you know, Julio, I, 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 I just... Uh, I just I can't see the FBI conducting this investigation and not recommending indictment. She might not get indicted, but I, I just think just the bad publicity from that recommendation, if it comes before the election, would sink her. This is all going to be about mudslinging as we get down towards November. I mean, they both have skeletons in their closet. That's going to be exposed on both sides. It's going to be an ugly election. If you thought the Republican primary was ugly, Wait till we gear up for the actual general election. It's going to be really dirty, I well, think. Yeah. Uh, you know what, David? We have a media that ignores the FBI investigation, that ignores so many things, and instead they focus on the fact that Donald Trump told a girl to put on a bikini. Who? What guy wouldn't if he had the opportunity, right? What guy wouldn't ask the girl to put on a bikini? Uh, I think America that resonates with Americans. It doesn't frighten Americans. And uh, David, I appreciate the call, sir. Okay. Yep, thanks. Have a good day. Thank you. All right, let's get one more in this segment. We go to Elmira, New York, and say hello to Brent. Hello, Brent. Bossberg, how you doing? Good. How are you, Brent? Uh, digging your show, man. Uh, I'm a Ross Pro independent. I'm for Trump. But uh, earlier you mentioned, uh, you know, the possibility of someone hacking into that plane and taking over the controls. Yeah. 
Uh, I was wondering what your opinion was maybe of uh, people hacking into the voting machines. Uh, I don't want I, I don't want to open up a can of worms because I don't know enough. But anybody can hack anything. Do I trust the sanctity of the of the and the or the integrity of our election process? A hundred percent. No. Having said that, it, can I think of a better system? Is there a better system? Not that I could think of. Uh, Julio, you got 20 seconds. What do you say? Well, I mean, voter fraud has happened before, so this is not something new. There has been evidence of it occurring, and I believe it was in Maryland and in one of the southern states. It generally coincides with uh, Democrats doing it. Brent, right now it's the best we have. I'm with you, though. I, you got to be skeptical, and we need better, uh, better you know, oversight of it. Thank you, my friend. Up next, Tim Graham, Molesburg's Media Madness, will be here. We'll talk about Facebook's meeting with conservatives yesterday. Julio, thank you. I'll see you on your show tonight. Yes. Kristen Tate and your calls next.